Sometimes Dutch sentences can be very complex. How do you know which word to put where? In this video, I'll cover a few basics to help you on your way. A Dutch sentence has to consist of at least two elements, a subject and the verb. A subject is the person who is doing the action, and the verb is the action itself. For example, hij slaapt, he is sleeping. Here the subject is hij, because he is doing the action, and slaapt is the verb, because it's the action itself. In Dutch, these two always go together. You can't put anything in between the subject and the verb. So if you have other information that you want to add to the sentence, it either has to go after the verb or at the beginning. For now, let's focus on putting things after the verb because it's the most neutral and also the easiest way of doing things. So let's add the word maybe to our example sentence. Maybe is misschien. Where do I put this? Well, I said you could put it after the verb because you cannot put it between the subject and the verb, so you have to put it at the end. Hij slaapt misschien. Maybe he's sleeping. What if you have several things that you want to add to your sentence? Let's take a very basic sentence. Ik werk. I'm working or I work. What if you want to add tomorrow, morgen, and in Amsterdam, in Amsterdam? How do you know which one goes first? We know that I have to start with ik werk, but do I then say in Amsterdam first or morgen first? Well, there's a very simple rule for Dutch sentences, and that is that time always comes before the place. So if you have both, first say the time and then say the place. In fact, we can extend this rule a little bit by adding more. The basic rule is Subject, verb, time, other stuff, and then the place. Other stuff can be many things, but it usually goes in between the time and the place. So if you just keep track of the time and the place in the sentence, and the subject and the verb, then generally you can create a very nice Dutch sentence that's grammatically correct. So let's take this rule and add morgen and in Amsterdam to our sentence. Ik werk morgen in Amsterdam. I'll be working in Amsterdam tomorrow. If I want to add other information, like misschien, then it goes in between the time and the place, because we saw that other information goes in between the time and the place. So, ik werk morgen misschien in Amsterdam. Ik werk morgen misschien in Amsterdam. Maybe I'll be working in Amsterdam tomorrow. Sometimes you have sentences with two verbs. For example, in the past tense, the VTT, if you have, for example, ik heb gewerkt, then hebben and gewerkt are both actions, they're both verbs. Another situation is where you have kunnen, mogen, moeten, or willen, plus another verb. For example, ik wil slapen, I want to sleep, want, and to sleep are both verbs. So here we have two verbs in a sentence. How does that work with the rule we just saw? Well, it's very simple. Our rule stays exactly the same. We just need to add in one more element. And that element goes at the very end of the sentence. So our second verb goes all the way at the end after the place. So now we have subject, verb, time, other stuff, place, and then the second verb in the sentence. Let's take an English sentence and translate it into Dutch following the rule that we just saw. The sentence is, I want to sleep in my own bed tonight. I want to sleep in my own bed tonight. Well, it's very easy. We have the subject and the verb, I want, that's ik wil. Then we have the time, vanavond, tonight. Then we have other stuff. Well, we don't really have any other stuff. We just have a place, in my own bed, in mijn eigen bed, and the second verb, slapen. 
So we have, ik wil vanavond in mijn eigen bed slapen. Ik wil vanavond in mijn eigen bed slapen. I want to sleep in my own bed tonight. There you go. You have a beautiful, long, grammatically correct sentence. And all you had to do is follow the rules. Now, I know that it might not be easy to remember these rules when you're speaking, but if you practice it a couple of times, after a while it will come naturally to you. Now, sometimes a sentence doesn't only have a subject, but also an object. The subject is the person or the thing doing the action. The object is the person or the thing that the action is done to. So, for example, if I say, I see the man, then I am the subject, because I'm the one doing the seeing, and the man is the object, because he's the one who is being seen. So, ik zie de man, ik is the subject, and de man is the object. Now, in this sentence, it's very easy. We have subject, verb, and then the object. But how does the object fit in with the rule that we just saw? Unfortunately, this is a tiny little bit trickier. There's two options here. Sometimes it comes before the time, and sometimes it goes after the time. The rule is, if the object is specific, it comes before the time, and if it's not specific, it comes after the time. Now, what do I mean by specific? Well, say for example, I have the man or a man. The specific one is the man, because I'm talking about a specific man. It's a man I've talked about before. You know which man I'm talking about, so we know which one it is. It's specific. Now, if I say a man, it's unspecific, because it could be any man. I saw a man on the street, but I don't know who he was, what his name is. It's the same in Dutch. If I say de man, it's a specific man. If I say un man, it's not a specific man. Now, it's not just about de, het, or un. It can also be about mijn vriend, for example. If I say mijn vriend, it's a very specific person. It's my friend. If I say un vriend, it could be many people. I've got several friends, and it could be any of them. So it's not specific. Or if I say deze jas, this coat, it's a very specific coat. If I say jassen, in general, coats in general, then is very unspecific. So you need to think about this to know whether it goes before or after the time. For example, ik zag mijn vriend gisteren op de markt. Ik zag mijn vriend gisteren op de markt. I saw my friend at the market yesterday. Here you see mijn vriend and then gisteren. So here the object comes before the time because the object is specific. I'm talking about mijn vriend. My friend is a very specific person I'm referring to. Now, if I said a friend, un vriend, then it would go after the time. Ik zag gisteren een vriend op de markt. Ik zag gisteren een vriend op de markt. So that last part was maybe a little tricky, but once you master this, you've got the fundamentals of the Dutch sentence down. There's a little more to it, and there's a lot of nuances, but if you get this right, then at least people will think you speak good Dutch. Now, let's practice translating some sentences from English into Dutch. How about, my friends want to go to an Italian restaurant tonight. In Dutch, that would be, mijn vrienden willen vanavond naar een Italiaans restaurant. Gaan. Mijn vrienden willen vanavond naar een Italiaans restaurant gaan. Why? Well, we always start with the subject and the verb. Uh, in this sentence, we have two verbs, willen and gaan. We always put the first one right with the subject at the beginning of the sentence and the second one at the end of the sentence. So, mijn vrienden willen, my friends want, vanavond, the time, tonight, and then we don't have other information, we just have a location, a place. Naar een Italiaans restaurant. And then the second verb, gaan. Let's try another one. How about, I watch that movie every year. 
I watch that movie every year. In Dutch, that would be Ik kijk die film ieder jaar. Ik kijk die film ieder jaar. Now, why did we put the time behind the object? Well, if you remember, the object goes before the time if it's specific. And I'm talking about that movie. I'm referring to a very specific movie that I watch every year. So, we saw that if it's specific, it has to come before the time. So, ik kijk die film ieder jaar. So, when speaking Dutch, remember the basic order of the sentence. Subject, verb, time, other stuff, place, and then the second verb. Now, if you add an object to the sentence, it goes before the time if it's specific, or after the time if it's not specific. Now, I'll make a few more videos about the order of the Dutch sentence in the future because there's a few more things to say. There's a few more different situations that we haven't covered and they're very much worth covering in the future because they're very important. But these are the basics, so I hope this was helpful. If it was, consider subscribing to my channel or even supporting my channel on Patreon. Uh, the people who are on screen right now have already decided to support me on Patreon. I want to thank them very much. Their help is greatly appreciated. Um, please let me know what you think about this video, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.